Hi, I'm Danny Brown. I'm the CEO of Myriad Real Estate Group, and this is our March market update. All right, so not a lot has changed since uh, my video from last month. Inventory is still incredibly low. Uh, we have not seen that influx of listings that we typically do in the springtime, but we have seen high, high buyer demand. It's about 17% above normal, and I think that has to do with increasing interest rates and more buyers entering the market earlier than they normally would during the spring selling season, trying to get under contract on homes before those rates continue to climb. I quoted in a previous video that I thought interest rates would be in the fours by the end of the year. Well, it turns out I was wrong. We were pushing 4% in February. So that has happened a lot faster than anybody thought it would. And recently we have seen those rates back down a little bit. Uh, that is primarily due to what is happening in the Ukraine and Russia, causing a lot of uncertainty in the market, causing people to shift their allocations more into you know, bonds and mortgage-backed securities, which are bringing mortgage rates down. The Fed, Jerome Powell, also came out today and stated that he was probably in favor with more of a quarter of a percent rate hike rather than a half a percent rate hike. And the markets all assumed half a percent prior to the Russia-Ukraine war. And now that that uncertainty has entered the market, uh, everybody's now expecting just a quarter of a percent rate hike. So we've seen an increase in the stock market today uh, and markets are viewing that favorably. So a lot of people think that the market is going to take a nosedive because interest rates are going up. And I don't think that that is going to occur. Uh, here in the greater Phoenix area, we are seeing a lot of purchases that involve cash, uh, smaller financing with a lot of cash coming to the table or large cash purchases just in general. That's a lot of outside money coming from Wall Street, institutional investors. You know, in a normal market for the greater Phoenix area, our investor purchase tends to be somewhere between 25 to 30 percent of the market. Right now, we're well above 40 percent of the market. And so that is driving a lot of this. Uh, so those are mom and pop investors buying rental properties. A lot of people, I field phone calls every day from Californians that are looking to buy or invest in the Phoenix market, whether that be long-term rentals or vacation rentals. That market is really booming in central Phoenix and in Old Town Scottsdale. Uh, and then you've got the Wall Street money or institutional buyers that are looking to buy property uh, and turn those into long-term rentals. Uh, I think that Wall Street wants to turn us all into renters, and that's why they are buying properties above market value, coming in with a lot of cash, um, and just affecting not just our real estate market, but real estate markets across the country. As these interest rates rise, uh, what that is doing is affecting people's affordability. Uh, however, in conversations that I'm having with our lender partners, the buyers that are coming in and getting pre-qualified with them, they aren't quoting them interest rates, but they're quoting them monthly payments. And the buyers don't even bat an eye when they're getting quoted a higher interest or a higher mortgage payment than what they would have been quoted six months ago. It tends to be right in line with their expectations. So they're just explaining things differently. And those buyers aren't having problems with those payments. So I think a lot of the people that you have buying homes right now have extra disposable income to uh, make up for the increase in interest rates. Now, eventually something's got to give where interest rates are gonna to continue to rise, and at this rate, they're probably gonna be up well above 4% by the end of the year, uh, and you've got property values continuing to rise. So things are just getting more and more expensive, not just in housing, but everywhere. So something will have to give at some point in time, and my belief is just because we have such low inventory that that will cause housing appreciation to slow, but not go down. I don't think that we're going to see property values uh, decrease here in the near term uh, this year or even into next year, but I do think that we will get to a normal rate of appreciation as buyer's affordability gets less and less. So that buyer pool will start to get smaller, but our inventory is so low that even if the buyer demand goes down and even goes down below normal, that we're still going to be in a seller's market. It just won't be as hot of a seller's market.
So what does all of this mean right now in Maricopa County? The average sales price for a home is 550, which is incredibly high and the highest that it's ever been. And I just read a stat today that now in 28 zip codes in Maricopa County, the average sales price is above a million dollars. 28 zip codes. That's, that is a lot of, of zip codes where the average price is extremely high. So that affordability for people has gotten really intense um, and it's just making it harder and harder for people to enter the housing market, um, which I'm not a fan of. I really like helping first time home buyers and I believe the greatest path to wealth is through home ownership and that is getting harder and harder for people to achieve. Yeah, so if you're a buyer in this market, what we kind of do is classify buyers into two different categories. So if you're a buyer who has the ability to essentially write a blank check for a home, uh, use an escalation clause. We're advising our buyer clients to, if they can, not to put a cap on that, uh, meaning that you are willing to pay above uh, the next highest offer, as high as it takes in order to get the home. Uh, include an appraisal waiver with that, shorten the inspection period from 10 calendar days to five calendar days. Now, if the, wave, or if the waiving of the cap to your escalation clause makes you scared, there are a lot of outs in the contract, and I did a previous video on this, where you can, if it gets too rich for your blood, even if you've waived your inspection period, uh, you can still find ways to get out of the contract if it gets too expensive, but at least by not putting a cap on your escalation clause, you're almost guaranteed to have the option to say no. Um, if you don't have the ability to write a blank check, uh, which is a majority of buyers, you should ignore and not even look at homes that are brand new to the market. Those brand new homes are getting saturated by buyers, tons of showings, tons of offers, ignore those. If they make it through the first weekend, that's your opportunity. See them the second weekend that they're on the, the market. So look at homes that have been listed for longer than seven days. Those typically have less competition. There's nothing you know, essentially wrong with the house, typically other than their price too high. So buyers in this market, even though homes are selling at really high prices, they are ignoring homes when they see them listed if they're overpriced. Uh, they will bid on homes that are priced where they should be and then do escalation clauses and still end up overpaying in the end for the house. But if the home is overpriced initially, they will ignore it. So that's your opportunity to submit an offer, not have the competition. You can sometimes, and for us oftentimes, negotiate that price down to probably where it should be. We've been able to get sellers to cover some closing costs. We've been able to get them to do repairs. And it, it's a much more pleasant transaction. And in fact, just in the month of February, we had three or four closings that were just like that scenario where the buyers weren't competing with other buyers and were able to get the homes for below the list price, get repairs done, and it was a much more pleasant transaction. So as a buyer, I know it's really hard to ignore those brand new listings, but you've got to do it if you don't have the ability to pay to play. Focus on the homes that have been listed for longer than seven days and you will find opportunity and you can get into those homes. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. This was my March market update and we will see you next time.